What's up, guys? <laughs> hey, what's up, Matt? This is Racing Through Life, a podcast hosted by myself and myself, Christian. What's going on? And uh, it's also hosted by Open Race, and mm-hmm. Open Race is an app um, looking to connect and motivate runners. It's a real-time virtual running app, one of it, one of a kind. Um, looking to help event organizers increase revenue, reach a larger audience, and provide a more interactive virtual race, especially during these COVID times, trying to do a lot of canceled events, and uh, we're just trying to bring back um, the fun. Yeah, absolutely. And Racing Through Life is kind of helping us brand. It's our podcast, and we're trying to take a deep dive into the running industry. You know, we felt that no one else, especially through podcasts, was, you know, um, talking to different runners. No one really understands the life kind of a runner goes through, competitive. Even people within the event organization world, it's it's a quite a close community, and uh, we're taking a deep dive in, and we got a great guest today. Phenomenal guest. We got awesome. Kendall Williams. Um, not only was she one of the most highly recruited heptathletes um, from high school, mm-hmm. she went on to University of Georgia, yep. um, and I don't want to talk too much about her whole Olympic time. Don't get them excited. Uh, but she was an Olympian, yeah. um, or she still is an Olympian. Um, went to the 2016 Rio Olympics, Training won a lot throughout her university career at University of Georgia. NCAA gold medalist quite, a, quite often. Yeah, very often. Yeah. And uh, super excited to have her on. We'll so, let her tell her story. Welcome. Kendall. 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 <laughs> wow. I literally <laughs> forgot to. I literally, this is our second podcast back to back. If that, if you realize so like mid, mid conversation, I've been like, oh my God. <laughs> So crazy. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm. Um, as you know, it's called like racing through life. Um, basically, what we want to do on here is kind of just um, get to know you both inside and outside of um, your athletic career. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have like a few questions lined up. We'll go off topic based on like how the conversation's going. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for for coming on, and we're excited. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited. <laughs> awesome. So whereabouts are you calling from today? I'm in Athens, Georgia. Cool. Awesome. How's yeah. the weather down there right now? It's like perfect. Like I love Georgia at this time because it's like 70s and sunny and like the leaves are now starting to change. And so it's just perfect. Today was a little on the warmer side. I think it's like uh, in the 80s today. But for the most part, like all this week, it's just been like beautiful, like the perfect weather. That's great. Yeah. I it's wish true. we can, I wish we could relate to that. It's getting now cause we're up in Toronto. So it's getting oh, wow. like, apparently we're supposed to have a really bad like winter. So the fall is going to be a little colder and now it's starting. We feel it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Last so week it was still in the twenties and then boom. The Weekend was bad. 20 yeah. degrees Celsius, Celsius. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's the conversion. I think I'm it's like to fair. maybe it's not 60. Is that a bad guess? 60? Maybe 60. If I, my, I feel like it's 60. So if no I had idea. to do the conversion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I was talking to you guys in Fahrenheit. Yeah. No, no, we knew. We kinda, but, yeah. I don't know. No, I knew she was talking in Fahrenheit. No, I was I just that I'm trying to do the mental math in my head. Okay, if she's Fahrenheit, we're <laughs> Celsius. So if we 10 degrees Celsius, what is that Fahrenheit? I just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> have you lived in Georgia um, your whole life, or you recently- uh, I have. I was actually I was born in Virginia, but I I don't claim it because we moved to Georgia when I was one. So like I okay. I grew up in Virginia, Virginia. So yeah, I was born in Kennesaw, Georgia, which is like an hour and a half from where I am now. Cool. And uh, yeah, my parents. We've been in that house all my life, and so I came uh, to the University of Georgia, which is in Athens. Um, and so yeah. I've just been training with my, um, my college coach. Um, nice. now that I'm a professional. I did go to San Diego briefly for like eight months to train at the Olympic training center. Um, but then after that, I just came like right back to Athens. So yeah, majority of my life has been in Georgia. Um, and I love it that way. I like Georgia. So mm-hmm. <laughs> very, very happy. That's awesome. That's great. Um, what, what's your favorite thing about Georgia? Um, Man, I, I like that people are so nice. And I guess that, I mean, like the Southern hospitality thing is very mm-hmm. real. Like people will like randomly give hugs or like give you food or, you know, <laughs> invite you to come with it. Like it's every, it's just, everybody is so nice. And then also I like the weather. It doesn't 
we don't really have any extremes. I mean, it gets yeah, like a little lucky. cold here, but we don't really see snow. Yeah, it's like it gets hot, but it's not like too hot. hot. Yeah. yeah, we don't get tornadoes or like, I mean, we get kind of the aftermath of hurricanes, but it's not, we're not in the, in the midst of the craziness. So yeah, I just feel like it's just like a good, just a good chill spot to like grow up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's great. One of the like, I guess Canada, yeah, um, Toronto more specifically is like, it's it's really nice in the summer. Like I I love it in it's the great. summer. It's great weather. Um, yeah. It's not like too hot, but it's like it's, it's warm. It's warm. It's warm. Like yeah. you're enjoying the and weather. It could be some hot days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. but then the winter is like super cold. And yeah. Unless you do like, like I played hockey most of my life growing up, so like I would like the winter when I'm playing hockey because like I have something right. to look forward to. But like now that I'm not playing hockey anymore, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> there's little to the winter it's other than like freezing like you sometimes don't sometimes going like snowboarding and i feel like as you get like older like when you're younger you don't think anything of it you know it's like all well, winter it's cold but like as you get older you're like okay like i'm i'm now it's cold now i'm just annoyed you know what i mean i'm just trying to get to work and i'm freezing <laughs> uh, i've never been to canada wow Surprising. yeah never i mean been. i've never been to georgia we've been to the state but not out i've never been i past like I went to Virginia Beach. Um, okay. Yeah, that was fun. I went to, I've been to New York City, like the main kind of spots, okay. Buffalo, just across the border here. Vegas. But, and oh yeah, we went to Vegas, Vegas for, for New Year's. Year's. That, oh, was fun. Okay. that was fun. Okay. <laughs> that was, that's like fun places. Yeah. <laughs> but not like out, like haven't been to Cali. I want to go to Cali. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to go um, down like the Atlantic coast mm -hmm. um, as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you recently got a dog. I or, did. Yeah. Yeah, she's Nova. Crazy. Love the name. Love the name Nova. Why? Why Nova? I literally just found it on the internet, and I was like, "That sounds good. That sounds something that's like not that common." I wanted something short, um, and yeah, I just I settled on Nova. But it's funny because when I tell people her name, they're like, "Oh, for Villanova," and I'm like. <laughs> no <laughs> <That's> <laughs> complete <laughs> opposite actually <laughs> like, yeah it, it literally has no other meaning other than i saw it on google when i was like typing in like girl cute, dog names. cute dog names for a girl <laughs> <laughs> exactly and then i scrolled through and then i had a list and um i was like you know what nova sounds good and different i've never heard it before yeah i had it yeah but she's She's fun. I uh, adopted her from a shelter that's like 30 minutes from here. Aww. And, um, yeah, but she just turned out very differently than I thought. Um, I thought I was getting like a nice, calm, quiet dog. And of course, that's never the case. Like, it's like they're quiet when you're like browsing, but then as soon as you get them home, it's like the personality explodes. So she's you get them in the car and they're just going all over the place. You're like, oh my God, what did I just do? <laughs> exactly. And then I didn't know what she was either because I got her from the pound and they said mix and they said, okay, she's a mix. Um, she's going to be 44 pounds. And I was like, oh, great. You know, she just looked like a lab to me. And then she started to grow into her face. And then my brother was like, uh, Kendall, I think she might be a pit bull. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not what I was trying to sign up for. And then we did the DNA test and it came back 50 50. She's half pit bull, half German shepherd. Um, well, that's pretty 70 sick. Pounds, I'm going. 70 pounds. And, and just so she's super intelligent, but like the energy level. <laughs> and then you bark. She's got the deepest bark. And um, you know, somebody, no, but please. Uh, and yeah, so she's, she's dense and she's super energetic, super smart, but um, definitely way different than I was expecting. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. I guess two part of question here, just just on the dog topic. Um, what's I guess the best part about having a dog, and like what's like your least favorite part? If you got to pay like one like little nitty thing, you just like I can live without. Yeah, okay, I can live without having to pick up poop. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, in sense. like my apartment complex, it's like you know the rule of like okay, you can't just leave the dogs. Yeah. Forever, you got to pick it up. So like I could live without that part. Um. And then also it's really expensive. You know, the food is expensive. Yeah. To eat. And then I like spoil her. So like every day I'm in the pet store buying toys, like spending <laughs> all, of, like, all of my money is going to the dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I guess I do that to myself. But 
the best part is just having um, company all the time. I mean, especially yep. during um, quarantine and stuff, I live by myself. So I couldn't imagine being here just alone in my like one bedroom. I would have gotten so bored. But the fact that I had her, we worked on a lot of tricks. So we learned how to roll over. During cool. quarantine. <laughs> I know I've always wanted a dog that could roll over. So we tackled that during quarantine. Um, and just, you know, getting out of the house to do, you know, walks yep. around the neighborhood or whatever, um, or go on hikes or something like, so just having just like something to keep you occupied day in and Great. day out. No, that's awesome. But you also said in your um, email, you sent us your brother lives down the street for you. That's correct. Yeah. So, and he's also an Olympic, an Olympic athlete, you said? Yeah. Yeah. He's a professional athlete as well. So he just missed the team in 2016 by two spots. So he placed fifth at the Olympic trials in 2016. Um, but then he made the world championship team in okay. 2017 and got 10th in the world. And then also in 2019. So, um, yeah, so we're really excited about, well, it was supposed to be this year, but next year, yep. uh, yeah, uh, hopefully do really well. Yeah, super great athlete and literally lives like three minutes down the road. So uh, that's really awesome. Do you guys, I guess, training purposes, um, is he also a heptathlete or is he? Um, it, well, yeah, so the men do the decathlon. So the women do the hept gotcha. and the men do the deck. They have 10 events. Um, yeah. But yeah, so sometimes we'll train together so on like tuesdays and thursdays mm -hmm. and saturdays i see him for like weightlifting and then our throwing sessions mm -hmm. um, but for our other event specific stuff um his group trains like early in the morning at 10 30 gotcha. so i mean sometimes when i get to practice he'll just be leaving because he's been so dead after the yep. workout that he's just now like coming back to life to be able to walk to his car <laughs> um but i mainly see him on like tuesday thursday saturday okay so this is that's in, first of all that's incredible the fact that both you guys are like top tier world-class <laughs> athletes and especially probably if not the hardest one of the hardest events because you know there's yeah. seven and ten so i mean eight has it seven, seven or eight ten. you're right you're right seven and ten yeah. seven. come on math i'm the math guy obviously you can <laughs> you can tell there but anyways so growing up how was it like you two just competitive wise pushing each other were you guys always just you know right from the get-go just natural freak athletes like how did that work growing up what sports did you two play talk about that um so yeah so he was more the sporty one i mean he did baseball basketball soccer like wow name it i was that little sister that was like playing with dolls and like i would just be kind of at his games yeah and, and he was playing baseball on the fourth of july and um after the game the team just decided to kind of just camp out and watch fireworks where we were yeah. and you know the the boys started racing each other like in the grass and so I decided that I wanted to race and I outran like most of them, except for Devin. And so after that, my parents were like, she probably needs to do something other than just like sit here and <laughs> watch do all this stuff. So, um, so that's when I started getting involved in sports. They found uh, the track team. Uh, and then, so that was kind of, that was, I was seven years old. My brother was eight at that time. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I've been running track ever since. I did play basketball, absolutely terrible. <laughs> I I was a cheerleader for a while, decent at the <laughs> okay. every other sport that I've tried. I mean, I did tennis lessons, swimming lessons, but it never graduated to doing the actual sport yep. because my dad was like, you, she's not progressing fast enough. <laughs> she's not going to be good at this. But for some reason, track just kind of, it just kind of stuck. It was like the only thing that like, it was like a glimmer of hope. So uh, stuck with track. And um, yeah, here we are today. My dad was actually our coach growing up from, you know, we were seven years old all the way up until we went to college. Wow. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So with track, did you like, how did you get into all these different yeah, events? That would be my first, like in high school. So I'm assuming um, you and your brother, uh, Devin? Yeah. I'm assuming you guys both were on the track team. So when you guys started up like grade, I guess, earlier years, grade nine, 10, what were you doing? You know, multiple race, multiple events, like the 100, 200. What was that like for you guys? Yeah, we started off doing, um, like when we were little, the short stuff, like 100, yep. 200. Um, and then my dad would tell us like, okay, well, in order to run a good 200, like you, you got to run the 400. And so Smart. <laughs> it kind of built up from there. And then, you know, we started to try out field events. Okay. 
Um, let's try the long jump. Let's try the high jump. And then at that age, when you're young, it's the pentathlon. So it's only five events. Okay. And we had already been doing most of them. Like we had been introduced to the hurdles. We had done some jumping events. Wow. Um, and so he's like, well, you know, now all we got to do is learn how to throw and then, you know, run the 800 or the 15 in my brother's case. And so, we, you know, we're already most of the way there to the pentathlon. So we tried that. Um, and I think that's ages, um, I don't know, like t- around 12 or something like wow. that. 12 or 15. Wow. And then, so the pentathlon, um, for me, graduates into the heptathlon. Yeah. So it just kind of just snowballed. But yeah, over the years, we just started trying different events. And then we realized that all these events can fit together into, you know, the heptathlon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how we got to where we are. <laughs> wow. That is, that's so impressive. Like, it's one thing being like good at like one thing and training like so hard. For on like the one 100, thing. you know, like but one you thing. Got seven, <laughs> your brother's got 10, like, and they're not even like, like, I guess there's somewhat... I can list them off if you'd like. Okay. Okay, I have a list. So, a heptathlete, it's 100... Now, let me know if I'm wrong. This was a Google search, so I'm hoping this is correct. 100-meter hurdles, high jump, shot put, 200 meters, long jump, javelin, and 800 meters. That is correct, yeah. Okay. So, what... Wow. What do... What's, like, one thing all those have in common? If there's any. <laughs> Explosiveness? I... Yeah, I guess. Except for then when you get to the eight, it's like you don't really have to be explosive. Although now the 800 is really turning into like a sprint. But like, yeah. I don't know. It's like, yeah, you don't need the same explosiveness to like get out of the blocks for like yeah. the hurdles too that you need for the eights. I don't know what they all have in common. Um, wow. I, I mean, it. yeah. No, I really don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> Nova. Oh, Nova. Nova, man. Uh, like, we literally it's Nova, went over dude. It. I know. I know okay. it sounds like a, a male dog. I literally, I, like, I had to put a pink bandana on her so that people <laughs> not saying, oh, he's so handsome. Because I would take her on a walk and they'd be like, oh, what's his name? Because <laughs> <laughs> she's so stocky. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know what the, all the events in the heptathlon would have in common. I guess just the person doing it just has to be crazy enough to want to do all of that. I guess, <laughs> like, I don't know. I guess my first question is when I guess you, your brother and your dad first got into, you know, training for all these events, uh, probably a lot for you guys at like 12, you know, like grade six, five, six, seven. So when you're, you're training for these and it's a lot of different events, was there one in particular that was more so you lo- you were, I guess maybe you were better in, so you liked it. And one, you were like, I don't really like this, this part of it. Yeah, for sure. Definitely love the hurdles. Um, okay. We spent so much time training for the hurdles. My dad loves the hurdles. He loved coaching us and he would come up with all these crazy drills and things <laughs> that we would put practice. Um, and it was just so fun to just kind of experiment and get faster at the hurdle so I think that's probably me and Devin's favorite event um and it has been all these years least favorite by far is the 800 like I mean I have a sense of like a a walrus like I just I cannot like I've always struggled with the 800 and it still like kills me to this day um so yeah I could definitely live without any kind of endurance running for sure I'm definitely like a short like speed power kind of person yeah. um so yeah 800 is by far at the bottom of the list and then hurdles are like way at the top okay that that's okay that's a fair answer to be honest <laughs> um so then after high school you go to uga so university of georgia did you get a full ride scholarship where you did a couple schools calling you asking you recruiting you how did that whole process i guess your grade 12 year how was how was that for you it was insane because the moment that like colleges are able to call you yeah they are blowing up the phone if you're like a um an elite athlete coming out of high school and so um I wasn't even taking the calls most of the time my dad was like I let him do all of that I'm like because I will get so overwhelmed so I think we got to kind of sit down and figure out a list of like what I wanted out of a Mm -hmm. program and then if Mm -hmm. schools just didn't need that then I just I, I don't know. I just couldn't like spend too much time talking to, there would be no point in like the coach coming to visit me going, if I knew that it wasn't going to meet the criteria. So yeah. um, you get five official visits 
And I actually only took three because okay. I'm like super indecisive. And I'm like, if I give myself too many options, you're not I, would never, I would be waiting still to this day to like make a decision about <laughs> where I'm going to school. But, um, so my official visits were uh, Georgia, Florida, and LSU. Okay. Um, I did take some unofficial visits kind of everywhere. Sure. I don't even know how many unofficials I did. Um, but I really narrowed it down to those three. And, um, and then even then I narrowed it down to like Georgia, Florida. Um, and I was going back and forth for a while. And then I just started to really see the benefit of going to UGA. My brother was already there. Mm. Um, so that kind of helped like me being able to see how my coach improved him in just one year. So I'm like, okay, well, we came from the same place. If he can improve my brother, he can probably improve me as well. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of what my coach's name is Petros, a lot of, um, his philosophies and things aligned with like how my dad coached us. And so it wouldn't have been that big of a shell shock going from Smart. my dad to, to Petros. Um, you know, it's an hour and 30 minutes from my house. I am a homebody. So, yep. you know, moving across the country was not going to work, you know, going too far was just not going to work. So I, I just, I started to see the benefits of UGA in the moment that I committed. Um, it just automatically just felt like the right place. And, um, I had a lot of success there and the, you know, the, the people there from like, not even just with athletics, but just the administration and my professors. I mean, I just, it was the best time going. That's out. awesome. Um, I guess I just have a little green with the subject. So when you, when you got the scholarship to um, UGA, did you have, so you were training, I guess, were there events for the HEP, the heptathlon? There were events. So that's what you were competing in um, for, I guess, like states and stuff like that. That's what you were like competing in. Um, um, like so the high school doesn't actually have the heptathlon and yeah heptathlon. so we would do that um during like summer like aau trip. got it okay, got it trip. in high school i would do like some of the individual events so like i would still do hurdles um long jump high mm -hmm. jump I, I was on the four by one relay the four by four um so yeah but they didn't actually have the heptathlon that would be just like aau trip. yeah okay so during, um, why don't you like run us through your experience, I guess, at Georgia. Um, like, how'd you like it? How'd you progress over the years? Yeah. Did it yeah. live up to the, like the standards that you kind of thought it would? Yeah. So, um, I started, well, my, my personal best in the heptathlon coming into Georgia was like 55, 78, I think. And I left with 65, 64. So I, I had a big wow. point increase. But Petros already told me that I, you know, because on my visit, he like had a binder and then he showed me the milestones that I was going to hit each year, like how he could improve me. That's also another reason that I, what convinced me to go to Georgia, he actually had a plan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in that first year, um, I improved from that 5578 and I got over 6,000 points. I don't remember the, what the exact score was, but um, I, I broke the 6,000 point barrier i broke the collegiate record in the pentathlon indoors wow um, which was really cool and i won ncaa's um indoor and outdoor freshman year so holy cow i wasn't expecting that at all what a year <laughs> yeah it was great and but i wasn't expecting it you know i was thinking as a freshman i was going to go in to ncaa's and i would have been happy to take home third or something you know what i mean just you know my first year so to win and then break the collegiate record. I was like, Dad, I'm coming home with more medals. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what happened? Like, I don't even know how that even happened. Um, so going into sophomore year, of course, there was a lot of pressure because I'm like, well, how am I supposed to relive that? Like, that's something I thought I was gonna do yeah. my senior year. Um, and so I I won indoor NCAA's again and rebroke the record again, and wow. then outdoor. I didn't win outdoor um, NCAAs. I think I, I played second outdoor NCAAs sophomore year. And then, oh, but my, my point total increased to, I don't know what, but it increased every year, got better. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. um, and then junior year, I rebroke my collegiate record indoors <laughs> again. And, um, and then I won outdoors as well again. And then junior year is also when I um, made the Olympic team. And then 2017, my last year, didn't break my um, collegiate record again. But, but I did you win? 
Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. and I won outdoors as well. So that was a good cap off and then um, made the world championship team that year. So it was really good. And we just kept improving and um, each event kept improving. And then I improved the, the consistency to where I could put them all together because yeah, it's like, you can have a, a great high jump PR yep. or great hurdle PR, but it's like, can you do them, you know, when you need to do them, like, you know, during a hip. So um, I think over the years, we've just focused on like being consistent, like being able to perform at your best during the, the hip. And so I think that's kind of why my score has been kind of gradually improving because as I get older, learning the events more and I'm able to get those big performances like when I need them. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Well, first of all, congratulations. Like yeah. that's yeah. an amazing feat. Has anyone broken your like first record? Uh, like the one from freshman? Yeah, freshman. the freshman. Cause she's not like, it's like record, record, record. <laughs> yeah. It's like record, record. I, I, that's a good oh name. yeah. Like when you look at the top records, it's literally your name three, four <laughs> times. Yeah, that's three true. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> anyway yeah you don't have to know the answer to that question but I, I, i'd be curious as an athlete i would be so scared like looking like oh like what's the record it's like the same part it's like oh okay, <laughs> okay. wait what's the no wait it's the first one okay who got second one yeah, yeah. oh all right <laughs> third oh. yeah it was it was cool i was trying to go for the four in a row but i think that day i messed up like the high jump or something and i was like it just threw my whole score off track and yeah I'd just be happy if I could win four straight because I don't I don't know if anybody had done that um, ever. The same, yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, that's a nuts, like insane yeah. feat. <laughs> that is, that's amazing. How does the so for the people that don't know, including okay. myself, how does the the scoring work and how like when do you do these events? Like, there's seven events, so do you do them like within two three days or like yeah, is there so a specific order? Indoors, the pentathlon, which is the five events, we do all of that in the same day. Okay. Um, and then the events, you get 30 minutes between each event to like do whatever you need to do. So that that, oh, that is wow. warm up time. That's time to get treatment. That's time to eat. Do everything that you need to do <laughs> in the 30 minutes before you get ready for your next wow. event. Um, and as far as scoring, I actually don't even know how scoring works. Like I think the running is more than the jumping and the like the jumping is worth more than the throwing like okay. I, I can't tell you like i don't know <laughs> like it, but it's it's kind of weighted like that like i know shot put is um not that high of a point getter so that's why like when i usually mess up the shot put which happens like every time my score i don't really fall that far in the standings okay. cuz i can do really well in like the hurdles or like the high jump or something which yeah. is worth ways more points um, the heptathlon is over two days, so you do four events the first day, That's and then um, long jump javelin 800 the the next day. Um, but yeah, the same. You get like 30 minutes in between um, each event to to get ready. So you'll see heptathletes with a suitcase, and in that suitcase we'll have like all of our shoes, of course, and then energy bars, know, water, Gatorade, yeah, energy things. You know, a cooler, like snacks, because you're literally just out there all day and you can't really go that far so yeah that's a weird time the half an hour is so awkward like uh you know yep. yeah you're spending the first 10 minutes just probably catching your breath yeah <laughs> yeah so you walk over to the next event site you sit down you might change your shoes you might take a bite of a bar um and then you gotta start getting your mark and warming up for the next event pretty much so we we do a lot with like very little like fuel in our body because usually yep. people would love to like eat a sandwich or something but nope we're on like peanuts and like little like energy chews yeah. and stuff like that um although in europe they do give us a little more time um so like we might actually have time to like eat a sandwich because we might have like an hour and a half or something but uh um, well that's pretty long though between each event an hour and a half oh no, no no like an hour and a half like like one block of an hour and a half where like we're just chilling like maybe before gotcha. 100 or something um if they have other stuff going on on the track uh we might get a little bit more time but for the most part it's 30 minutes okay that's what's up i think that's like fair that's, I th it's I mean, tiring it's <laughs> that's definitely like by like event three i'm like yeah it's definitely it's definitely tiring 
do you do you have any okay so the the point system so it'd be more it would be beneficial to for someone to improve like their running um so that they get a better overall score um yeah. do you is the points by like what place you come in or by like time 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 so okay. and that's what's so interesting about the multi it's, it's like if you have a hundred you're like just literally racing against the person next to you but multi eventers you'll see us like cheering for each other and like helping each other out because at the end of the day it's like yeah we're c competing against each other but we're ultimately trying to get our best score yeah. and so and we do that by like getting our best mark because it's like yes yeah, someone might place first and you know get a certain amount of points but if i'm only maybe like a half a second behind her i'm not gonna be that far behind her in the points i might be maybe like 50 points behind her or something like that like you don't get extra points for winning the event um i mean i don't know i guess it's i, I mean i guess you. Can no, i know what you mean no i know i know what you're trying to say yeah it's like it's it's not really i mean yeah you do want to win as many events as you can because that will equal more points, more points than yeah. your competitors getting. um but yeah, that's what's interesting about the multi is, yeah, you just kind of, people have strength and, strengths and weaknesses. So like my strength is the hurdles and like the jumping events. My weaknesses are the shot put um, and like the javelin and the eight. So you kind of got to just be strategic about, you know, you got to look at yeah. okay, this person's strength is this, you know, I got to make sure I don't completely drop the ball. Otherwise this person can get enough points to like pass me in the standings. Yeah. Um, so it's it's interesting and like stressful, but it's fun. No, I can see where the stress at any point in that day would come, especially like <laughs> let's say one of the event like like you just said one of the events that you think you, you have an upper hand on your yeah. competitor who usually is like right there with you. I guess so like like the two or three does better you in the hurdles. Yeah. You're like okay, I gotta yeah. like do better now in in the right. jump. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, to make some more points up. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's cool. And you said also in the email you had a unique story about getting into the Olympic trials. Yeah. yeah I, I'd love to hear that. What's that about? Yeah. So, oh my gosh, the U.S. Olympic trials is like the most stressful week I've ever experienced. I mean, you can like cut the tension with a knife. Like it was, and the heptathletes, we competed at the end of the week. So we have watched people's like dreams come true or their dreams be crushed. All that's scary. Week. And we're just waiting for like our chance. Wow. So um, I, I'm coming in, you know, after the collegiate season, I've had a good season. Um, you know, there's probably like four of us that like are really, really in contention to like make the team. So yeah. I'm going in with the mindset of, okay, if everything goes well, I can probably make this team. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have a good first day, um, decent second day. I can't remember now if anything if I, if I really messed up anything, it was probably the shot put, honestly, if, if anything, but, um, so flash forward to the 800 and I'm sitting in third, only three people make the team. And the woman behind me sitting in fourth, she, her, her personal best in the 800 is like 10 seconds or something, 10 seconds or more faster than mine. And so, but the problem is I cannot let her beat me by more than like seven and a half seconds or something. Oh. And so I'm sitting here before the race, like, how, how is this going to work? Like, I don't know. Like she's been to the Olympics before. She's like a seasoned person. This is my yeah. first time. Oh my gosh. I'm like the nerves. Like I'm already nervous before any 800. Just for And you're a junior, right? You said you were a junior. And oh, so you're yeah. your third year in college, right? Yeah. Yes, and That's she's, scary. A, she's she's like I don't even know maybe like thirty one at this point. Oh my god! Um, so I'm freaking out, and so yeah, you know, my my coach like you know before every race he kind of tells me what I need to do, um, you know whether it's to get a, my own personal best, whether it's to go after a record, whether it's to maintain a the spot that I'm in. So he tells me that I have like seven and a half seconds or something, and he's just like you've just got to. No, I think he asked me. I think he's like you know, what do you, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. And he's like, just, just stay, just try to stay on her shoulder, just relax and just kind of just stay, tuck in behind her. And I'm like, that's easier said than done. And so anyway, he leaves, I'm freaking out. And my brother actually comes up to me and he says, Kendall, um, the pain is going to last like a couple of minutes. And he said, but being an Olympian is going to last a lifetime. He's like, so you can just you can do chills. it. He's like, yeah. just believe in yourself. 
And so he was the last person I talked to before I stepped on the track. And um, I literally just, like, I ran my, like, guts out. Like, I literally fell across the finish line because my legs were so tired. It was a personal best in the 800. And so I'm on the track, barely crossed the line. People were, like, fumbling behind me because I literally fell right in front of everyone. Um, and I'm just, like, hands and knees on the track. And I was, like, I hope that was enough because... I don't have anything left. Like she had already pulled ahead of me, like yeah. um, by a couple of meters, like, you know, cause obviously she's a better runner than I am. So she had crossed the line long before me. And I, obviously I'm not counting the seconds. So um, I'm, I'm waiting for them to calculate the final point totals. And then when they finally get it up, I look up to like the little scoreboard thing in my name. How many was like one? Third. Huh? How, what was the scores? Oh, I can't even remember. It might've been like, 60 maybe like 62 something for me but I only I think I only got her maybe by like it had to be less than 20 points I don't know which is like nothing at all like I think if I if I ran like a half a second slower I would have missed it like it was it was so close like I got it by the skin of my teeth and so I look up my name is still in third and I was just like oh my god and then literally the first person I see is my brother who somehow made it down to the track to where like the photographers are and it was only after um like when i got to talk to him after the meet that he said that he literally like begged the security to like let him by the gate because he's like look my sister's about to make the olympic team can i just stand here or whatever so i like literally like scrape myself up off the track <laughs> and like, go and like, give him a hug or whatever and that's actually the picture that's um on my screensaver right now because it was such a moment um I don't, I don't know if you guys can even see this but oh i can like see hugging him yeah Aww. somebody i don't even know how somebody even got that photo but yeah it was just such a tense moment and i literally just made it like i said in the email by like the skin of my teeth because had i been any slower <laughs> like i would have not made the team so um it was it was very very intense but yeah, wow. managed to hang on to third by, I don't even know. <laughs> that, that that's that, like, that, 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 yeah, that's nuts. That's, yeah. that is nuts. Literally panicking the entire race, especially when I saw her, like when I knew that my legs were dead and I saw her pulling away from me. Oh, was, that's scary. I don't, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to do it. <laughs> but wow. now we got it done. That's phenomenal. That's Good amazing. Yeah. That, I, that story with your brother actually like, gave me chills. Yeah. As that, you were saying, yeah. What he said, that was, that was cool. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. Wow. Um, wow. I don't even know how to <laughs> continue. No, I, yeah, that. I know. I have a question. So how was the Olympic? How was your first Olympics? What was, I guess, how was the village, Athletes Village? How was all that, the whole experience? Oh, it was so cool because it's not like making a normal – world team because like a normal world team you know you make it you go through team processing you get sized for like your uniform and stuff and then you leave they mail you your suitcase filled with all your gear a couple weeks later olympic team so different you still do all that uniform sizing stuff but you go through like a whole gallery of like um ralph lauren polo stuff and you get all of that gear and fitted for like Sick. opening ceremony stuff and then you get like extra nike gear i mean i was in this nike i don't even know what it even was but they had my name somehow on the mirror <laughs> and they had like all this stuff that I had never seen and I was it, it was just so so cool and then um we went to training camp in Houston I believe before we all left for Rio um and uh of course that's when like Zika and stuff was really big so um yeah. I didn't really go out and explore outside of the village much mm -hmm. uh, but the village was cool I mean it was just these you know huge towers um everywhere people in different countries i mean usa have their own building because we're a huge team um but like some countries had to like share a building which was fine everybody hung their flags outside of um mm -hmm. their building um the eating area was just this giant like i don't want to say cafeteria but that's kind of what it was it had different lines um of like different kinds of food you just grab a plate and go wherever yeah. it's in the middle um which was really cool because you're getting to eat with every like literally everybody in the village there was also a mcdonald's that Ooh. was always packed um, <laughs> really 
Yeah, the McDonald's was like right there in the village, always lying out the door. You, you wouldn't think that would be the first thing to put in the <laughs> athletes' know. village. You know what, guys? We need a McDonald's. They're gonna they're gonna need a McDonald's stat. I mean, like McDonald's if you're done, I mean, I'm hoping that I was posting. No, no, it was all week. I mean, like people were there all the time. Like, and, <laughs> they have some good breakfast. They have good breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> what were you eating before breakfast before the day of your meet i want to see if it was an egg mcmuffin <laughs> it wasn't an egg mcmuffin but i think it, it probably was like some toast i eat pretty simple on meat day but i definitely did go to mcdonald's and get like nuggets and like cookies and, st- and fries yeah. of course oh like the day oh, of your race during no like oh like after no before but like not right before <laughs> so like you get there and you still had like a couple days to adjust and then there was opening ceremonies and then I think track started maybe like four days later so like when we first got there yeah I was eating McDonald's and then, yeah. but not like every day some people were like you know consistently like I'm at McDonald's um, so I was trying to do a little bit better but it's so tempting <laughs> what, what country was at McDonald's the most what country has McDonald's the most? I don't no, what country was at the McDonald's the most? That's a good question. I think it might have been like, like the countries in Africa, like Kenya. Like I don't, I don't really know. I can't remember. <laughs> I think it was African countries, to be honest. But yeah, but it was there was a McDonald's and they had like a PNG, like a nail salon. Um, oh, wow. like you that. And what else? They had some other cool stuff. I know they had a. A uh, little station with like uh, virtual reality goggles and stuff. I think. Oh, it was Samsung because they were giving out phones. I think. Yeah, I think mm. it was like a Samsung thing. They're giving out Olympic phones. I don't know. So there was like a lot of stuff. You kind of really didn't need to leave the village, which yep. I think was the point. They wanted yeah. you to have everything that you could possibly ever need and want. So um, yeah, I didn't leave much. My parents came um outside of the gates because there's all this security to get in the village of course yeah probably so i hung out with them before the day of the meet and it was just really cool i mean opening ceremonies was cool i was on tv like stuffing my face with popcorn so like people got pictures (laughs) of that like i'm just like behind like serena williams or something just like face full of popcorn (laughs) so um (laughs) so that was opening ceremony and then um we walked around this like big arena. Everybody had their, you know, flags. Everybody was dressed in their like nice outfits and stuff. And that was super cool. Um, and then competing. I mean, I don't know how many times I stopped and just like looked around and said like, I'm at the Olympics. Like, I don't even know how no. I got here. Like, this is like, I mean, it's something you watch on TV, something you dream about, but like never something- Did you miss doing. exams? Weird question, but- Okay, so- <laughs> Is it during school, exam time? School was starting. So I did not even stay for the duration of the Olympics. Like I left. So my roommate oh. um, at Georgia was also a triple jumper and she made the Olympic team as well. So like the heptathletes competed at the beginning of the week. Triple jump was like the next day. And then we left to go back to school. What? And then, yes. And so I'm sitting at home watching the Olympics on TV and I'm Kendall. like, you know, my professors would have probably understood. <laughs> Like, did you even like, try you're like hey no. guys sorry brb after the olympics representing our country right now i can't make math 101 <laughs> i literally didn't even try like i literally was like okay i'm gonna come to the olympics but then like i have to get back to <laughs> it was so i know looking back on it i'm like what why would i not stay so like if i make this 2021 team I am staying the whole time <laughs> from start to finish. I've heard the parties are. are um, I was just though. about to ask. Like, I did, were the parties fun? Yeah. So, like, I mean, obviously, I didn't go to the Olympic one. I imagine that was like super crazy. But um, yeah, I actually haven't haven't been to a senior team party. I don't know if I have. But like, the parties are usually fun because it's just everybody from every country just letting loose. I mean, it's after the meet, so people can just. You after know, their event, they're probably know. going nuts. Yeah. Yeah, they're just letting loose. I after they have tap on, I'm usually just like pretty dead. So like, I'm yeah. usually just in my bed, like shriveled up. Like <laughs> I <laughs> wish I could have fun, but like I feel so dead. Um, but the parties that I have made it to, I'm just like, yeah, this is so cool. And then I have a lot of former teammates um, on other countries' teams. So like I, you know, knew people from Cyprus and from wow. like 
you know, Antigua and everywhere. So it's cool to like kind of see them as well. Like, oh, we're in a different country, but we like train together. We have a bunch of Estonian um, the athletes that train at Georgia. So it's like kind of cool to just see people on other teams. You see your teammates at the McDonald's. Oh, hey, you're here. Yeah, I'm just getting my nuggets before my event. <laughs> <laughs> we talked to a an olympic race walker that was also at rio mm -hmm. um a part of great britain um tom bosworth and okay. he said that uh great britain threw like a party. massive party that got uh, shut down their, or something on their floors like oh! it was like three floors close to the end of the olympics and it got like shut down because all the other oh. countries started coming and uh, oh. yeah. it was an open bar apparently they had to close the tab yeah yeah that's so crazy. I don't doubt it though. I, like I said, people let loose after after they're done competing, after the stress is over. Seriously. Um, and then most people, that's the end of the season for them. So it's like we don't even have to worry about like going back to training in a couple of days. It's like we can just literally. This is freedom. Um, yeah. So yeah, definitely. I don't. I don't doubt it. For sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. That's, that's crazy. That's cool. That it's really cool to see, like, to get, experience. like, your perspective yeah. on it. From, like, like, how the Olympics was. Like, I wouldn't have known there was a McDonald's. Like, I wouldn't yeah. have known that. Yeah, I guess a lot of people don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was it was good, too. It was pretty normal. That was a question I got. It was, like, was the food, like, pretty much the same? And I was, like, yeah. Like, it was. It was just literally just packed in there. <laughs> like, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. They've got it. Yeah, they've probably got to meet everyone. They've meet it like everyone, like every possible like demographic or yeah. type of person they need to like meet their needs. It's got to be perfect. Like the so amount of money they probably have on <laughs> budget on food has got to be like perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because in the cafeteria, I mean, they have like pastas and chicken and you know rice and bread. Like they literally just try to cover everyone. everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. To make everybody be able to find something to eat because that's the worst thing is when you go to yeah. country, like don't recognize anything or you don't like anything I'm ah. a picky eater, so like i've been Named. in some places where i'm like i don't know is there is there a mcdonald's close by <laughs> like, i don't know um yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> now i travel with like peanut butter and like stuff to make a sandwich because oh my gosh. I my own snacks because i literally i made the mistake i was in france and it was a world youth team and i didn't bring my own snacks didn't know what the food was and i'm like 15 or something so i'm like super all i eat is like chicken nuggets at this time anyway so i get to like france and i'm like i don't know what this is and i'm calling my dad like dad i'm not eating anything like can you help me so he's actually coming to the meet and literally every day i, I was eating mcdonald's like before the meet because <laughs> how'd you do in the meet yes like he would just bring me mcdonald's because I, I wasn't eating anything else yeah. But after that, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to bring my own snacks so that I, I know that I always have something that I like. So, like, I always bring, like, Nature Valley bars. I always bring, like, you know, little travel size, like, peanut butter, jelly, you know, crackers, whatever, mm -hmm. just so I can have, like, you know, if I just get snacky or hungry, I'm not trying to find the nearest, like, fast food that I recognize. I imagine what the other 15-year-olds the World Championship are thinking. They're getting ready, like, half an hour is the first, like, the hurdles. And then all you see is your dad walking over to the McDonald's bag, gives it to you. You start <laughs> chowing down McDonald's. And the one kid from Poland's like, no, she's built different, eh? I just can't. And then you got her dad, like, feeding her, like, vegan protein bars. She's like, where's my nuggets? <laughs> it was rough. It was, yeah, it was. It was, it's, it's been, it's been interesting overseas. That's for sure. That's awesome. <laughs> that's cool. Where is your, like, what's, ha, what has been your favorite place that you've traveled to? Let's go on. Uh, Doha last year was actually really, 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 really cool. And I, I, I probably would have never gone to Doha, you know, Qatar had I not had, you know, the world championships there, yeah. but it was really cool. Everything just looked, the buildings were super modern. Um, everything was lit up really nice at night. Um, the people were really nice and yeah, it was just beautiful. My family like vacationed a little bit afterwards. So we did all the, like the sand, like, I think, I forgot, I think it's called dune bashing or something like that. We're basically just flying an SUV, like over the sand dunes in the desert. That's yeah, sick. That's and, cool. Yeah. And like camel riding and, um, stuff like that. So it's, it's a beautiful place. Um, so that's, that's been my favorite place. I love London as well. I mean, I just think it, that's 
beautiful too. But my all time, my, my favorite meat is actually in Austria and that's um, Gottes. And that's just a heptathlon decathlon meat. And um, the fans love the multi-event. So they show up, they're you know, it's packed. People are drinking beer. Like they know who all the athletes are. It's just like one big party and their music is blasting. And well, that's, uh, so that's was my sick. Yeah, I mean, it was so fun when I went um, in 2019. And I was just like counting down the days to go back this past year. So I was super bummed that like uh-huh. we couldn't. But um, yeah, and then like they, they fly us out um, obviously like a, a week early or something like that to just get us acclimated. But since the U.S. people are there so early, like we get to do a kids event before the meet, which was really cool. Um, and then they just they just have a bunch of stuff to celebrate the um, the multi eventers, and so it's nice to just like feel that love because we're kind of the forgotten about event. So to have a meet specifically for us, and the fans show up and they know who you are and they're excited about like watching you compete, um, it's really cool. And like fans are just lined along the track. It's not like a huge, huge stadium where like the fans are like way back. They're like yeah. they're right there. It's it's so much fun. So that's by far my favorite meet in Austria. Austria is also beautiful. Um, so, but yeah, so I guess those three places, Austria, London, and um, Doha would be my favorites thus far. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. That's sick. That's really cool. Cause I think like, um, like big sports, like basketball, obviously hockey and stuff, they're used to that like massive crowd. Mm-hmm. But when you go into those like s- smaller events, I guess, um, and like, even just like, just like, just like a long jump event, yeah. like probably not too many eyes on that. So right. like when you get to just your specific event, it's probably so cool seeing like the the entire Atmosphere. crowd there. It's just yeah. like just you guys. Yep. Um, yeah, that's cool. Cause like some like as cool as it is seeing like a massive crowd with like hundreds of thousands of people, um, it's I think sometimes more special being like connected. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. And, like, yeah, sharing that experience with them. So yeah, yeah. that's cool. Speaking of like the whole COVID situation, how it got like your Austrian meet got canceled. How have you been like dealing with the, uh, like, I guess the COVID situation training wise and just like life wise, um, how have you been keeping busy? Um, fortunately for me, um, I wasn't super thrown off. I know like, you know, some people are, you know, on the, on the brink of retirement and they're waiting until the yeah. Olympics to start a family. So I'm not there, you know, and I'm not, you know, some people might've just had surgery. And so they're grateful for this time because it allows them more time to recover yep. or they just fear something. I'm not there. So I was just kind of like, you know, okay. Like, you know, I, I trust that my coach will, you know, I, I trust that he was going to have me ready had it happened this year, but I think he'll definitely have me ready, you know, in 2021. Mm-hmm. So, um, we just really used the time to like focus on the things that I wouldn't normally focus on in a normal season. So we worked a lot on like core strength and like shoulder strength, um, ankle stability, just stuff that would kind of get looked over if you're kind of in the normal hustle and bustle of a season. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was a really nice use of the time. And my coach really stressed like, you know, this is a time to rest like mentally, physically, emotionally, all of that. He's like, because we're going to have the Olympics and then world championships, world championships. So the next three years, we're going to be pushing it. So he's like, so use this time to just kind of unplug and have fun and just, you know, relax, do things that you, you know, just in, enjoy doing. I mean, as safe as you can. So I yeah. was scrapbooking, you know, like I said, I, I taught my dog all these tricks and, you know, <laughs> hung out with her a bunch. Um, I got like an exercise bike to start, you know, doing stuff at the house, you know, just getting creative about different ways to work out. Um, so yeah, I think we utilized this time as best we could. And of course it helped with my brother being down the street. Um, you know, if if I got bored, we would just go walk our dogs together or like, I would just go see whatever, like he was cooking or something. (laughs) Um, so yes, I think that we did the best we could. Um, obviously, it, it was a bummer not to compete. I mean, as athletes, we, of course, we just want to get out there. Yeah. Um, and that's how we make most of our income is, is competing and prize money. So mm. um, I think if anything, like that's what hit me the hardest was the fact that, you know, luckily my sponsor is Nike and I have like a, a base salary through them, but majority of the income comes from prize money. Um, so I guess that's the biggest way that I was affected is just like not having the potential to earn income like we do most years. Mm-hmm. Um but aside from that, I was able to just kind of start some projects that 
Um, I've been putting off, I, you know, made my apartment more of a home, you know, I was decorating it, you know, just kind of just spending time unplugging. And so um, now that we've kind of gotten back into the swing of training, I feel like very refreshed and like very, very good going into this next year. Yeah, that's great. That's great that you made the most of it. Like a lot of people um, think of it negatively. And actually, like speaking of surgery, our last podcast uh, guest um, just had surgery as well. Oh, and yeah. she used this time as recovery, um, which is great. And I smart. guess lucky um, for some yeah. people. Lucky and smart. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's great that you like continue to like find other things to do. Keep yourself um, occupied. busy, occupied. Yeah, that's the, that's the, the best thing. way to kind of go about it. Because once you start doing nothing, you get into that routine yeah. of doing nothing. And even when COVID might be gone, you're still stuck still doing, doing nothing. nothing yeah yeah exactly you know i try to try to do just a little something you know whether it's you know go on a hike or something explore a new trail just something to make it seem like i still had some sort of routine yeah uh, but yeah it's it's definitely been an interesting year that's for sure yeah for sure i agree um yeah. well yeah that was a phenomenal talking to you amazing uh, lots of great stories fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming to the end so we got one more little segment that we like to do at the end and it's a speed round okay uh, <laughs> so we have a few questions lined up just kind of give us your answer um you can take a few seconds um and then at the end we have a little longer one um and yeah and we'll kind of end it off yeah so i want to start with the questions okay so first question favorite movie oh um, um 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 mad money Okay. On. Favorite TV series? Um, right now I'm watching Luther on Netflix. Okay. I mean on Amazon Prime, and it's actually pretty good. So that's kind of what I'm into now. Love that. You said you were a massive sweet tooth. You have a massive sweet tooth in uh in the email. So what's your favorite dessert? Um, well, my, well, my favorite candy is sour punch straws, but I love like cake. My favorite cake would just be like vanilla with like the white vanilla icing but yeah i love like cakes candies cookies literally all of it <laughs> that's awesome um if you could travel to one place in the world where would it be um i would love to go to i don't know like like fiji or something like something that's cool like really out there yeah yeah biggest fear um bugs like cockroaches <laughs> yeah i hate bugs oh. <laughs> i hate <laughs> bugs if you could be one thing other than a heptathlete what would it be um i would probably be like some sort of something in like marketing or advertising that's what i got my degree in um and i like love that whole world so i could just i would be some somewhere in the creative department in like advertising probably Cool. I love that answer. Favorite cheat meal? Oh, I don't. I don't know what's considered cheat. I like our our like tacos. Is that a cheat meal? I don't know. Yeah, like, if okay. it's not in your regular routine of diet, I would say it's a cheat meal. All right. Well, maybe that's not a cheat meal. Maybe like pizza. <laughs> like it's like <laughs> I eat tacos pretty regularly. No, pizza tacos are regular. good. <laughs> yeah. I love tacos. <laughs> Me too. And I'm like, I don't know what's good. Soft shell or hard shell? That's the big question. Soft shell. Have you ever done soft ball. shell around a hard shell? Mm, bam. I haven't, but I usually break my hard shells into like nachos. Okay. Okay. If you want to get nice crunch, <laughs> but still that soft texture, hard shell covered in the soft shell. It's Amazing. Perfect. I'm going to try that. I'm so, <laughs> so good. It's so good. And it catches whatever falls from the hard shell. Because it's in the soft hard shell. <laughs> <laughs> I love that thing, man. Uh um all right so last question you can take a little bit more time for this one uh if you could have dinner with one person dead or alive who would it be and why Ooh. if i can have dinner with one person i would say i don't know i would probably have dinner with jackie joiner kersey and she's alive but she um, is like the greatest to ever do it and they have Tathlon. And um, I have talked to her before. So like I do have her wow. phone number and she's like, she keeps up with like some of what, you know, the big meets we're at and what's going on. 
but we've never actually like sat down and like had dinner. So I would love to just sit down and be able to like pick her brain on, mm. on some things. And even her just transition now after being a pro, like, I just feel like, you know, she would just have so much like knowledge to just like spill onto me. So, um, yeah, I would love to have dinner with her. Okay. What's her name again? Jackie Joyner Kersey. Jackie. Okay. Jackie, if you're listening to this, um, <laughs> Ken, she probably, she probably is listening to this. Um, so Kendall would love to have dinner with you. Uh, I think you should make it happen. Um, yeah, she deserves it. <laughs> and I guess this is kind of the end nearing the end, basically the podcast, uh, Kendall, um, if you want to give a quick shout out, give the, give the viewers at home kind of, uh, let them know about life fuels and me versus me. Tell them a little rundown of what both those are about. Yeah, so my um, brother's brand, he created a brand called Me Vs. Me, and um, I love what it stands for. I mean, my brother's been through a lot of like uh, trials and tribulations through his athletic career. It's, yep. it's probably the polar opposite of mine, um, which is interesting because we're both very elite athletes, but his story mm. is way different, and he created this brand kind of as a result of kind of everything that um, he's been through, and I just love what it stands for. It's just all about like overcoming like your own like personal like boundaries like whatever you're going through yeah. it's, it's it's you versus you so like whether you're you know set your goals for yourself accomplish those goals or like if you're going through a trial just you know push past it like it's forget all the outside noise it's you it's you versus you basically and so um yeah so you can buy merchandise off of his website it's called shop mvm like shop in me versus me dot com um and so yeah, I had to shout that out, of course, just because I love my brother and and I love what the the brand stands for. And then also, Life Fuels is uh, this cool little water bottle. Um, and I just recently became a brand ambassador for them. And cool. this bottle is really cool because it allows you to kind of infuse your water with kind of anything you need. So right now in my bottle, I have lemon lime electrolytes, um, dragon fruit flavored natural energy, and then sour apple pre workout. But they also oh. have like um, antioxidants, they have collagen, and you just literally screw this pot into the bottom of your water and then you press this button to be able to infuse however much you want into your water. And um, that's yeah, really cool. Different flavors, yeah, a bunch of different flavors. They have peach, they have strawberry kiwi lemonade, they have like, I don't, I don't even know, like blackberry and lime. So um, yeah, so I, I've been using this lately and it's like changed the game for me hydration wise. And they also have an app that you can track your hydration and, um, it like kind of sets a, a hydration goal for you, depending on like how active you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also dispense, um, uh, your pods into your bottle from the app. Um, so it's just really cool. And, and I have been loving it hydration wise after the workout, I literally just like shoot some electrolytes into my water and, um, I, I feel so much better. Like before the workout, I yeah. did a pre-workout bottle. So, um, yeah. So loving life fuels, and then I'm loving me for oh, me. So me. those are like my awesome. two things that I, I like had to shout out. That's awesome. That's great. And both were for other people. That's yeah. That's <laughs> yeah awesome I don't, like, have of you. Like personal, like cool stuff. I wish I did, but no. Nope. Maybe like a marketing agency later on. I, yeah, I know. I need to get on that. I mean, like as a marketing, like advertising person, you would think that like I would do a better job for me, but it's like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did a great job showing out Life Fuels and your brother's brand. Yeah. It was fantastic. Like selling other people's products. <laughs> that, that's still marketing. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, we'll do a quick shout out for you. You can follow Kendall on Instagram uh, yeah. at uh, kdub underscore 100. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. One of our yeah. earlier guests and uh, it was phenomenal. Amazing. Great, great story. Um, and we'll, we'll definitely stay in touch. Awesome. Thank you guys. Awesome. Have a great one. You too. Bye.